Are you also concerned about the US financial crisis? Don't worry, you will get to know about it through this video, so make sure to keep up till the end. Number 1. Is US already facing financial crisis? To get the answer, first we will discuss a little about financial crisis. In easy words, we can say that financial simply means when financial instruments and assets decrease significantly in value. Yes, yes, I know you are eager to know about the answer. It can be figured out in this way Americans have been facing decades of high inflation, near record gas costs, and flying grocery bills. It actually may additionally seem like it, however most economists say the US financial system is no longer presently in a recession. Fed Chair Jerome Powell agreed when requested that same query on July 27th. That said a slew of latest records has intensified the debate. Number 2. What does the figure say? Let's talk about the figures generated by US government's hallmark measure of economic activity gross domestic product, posted back-to-back -back quarterly declines in the first half of the year. The pullback in the first quarter mostly mirrored a surge in imports. GDP is intended to seize domestic production, so surging imports dragged down the headline figure. The second quarter, however, indicated a greater concerning decline. The government's preliminary evaluation of the second quarter, launched on July 28th, confirmed a slowdown in customer spending, as well as declines in commercial enterprise investment, authority outlays, and housing. Inventories additionally weighed on GDP. As determined by the NBER, even if the data so far in 2022 fit the recession rule of the thumb of two consecutive quarters of declining GDP, doesn't imply that the US is formally in recession. Number three, what are the economists expecting? If we are talking about economists' expectations, I would like to present firstly the Bloomberg economics model that says there's a 100% chance of a recession by the beginning of 2024. Secondly, the economists at Deutsche Bank AG, one of the first main banks to forecast a recession, assume it to start in mid-2023. Thirdly, the Wells Fargo & Co sees the U.S. getting into recession in early 2023. And lastly, Nomura Holdings Incorporated expects one even sooner, starting at the end of 2022. Number 4. Will the financial crisis become unavoidable? Let's see what U.S. presidents have said about it. Maybe it will answer this question for us more efficiently. President Joe Biden's administration insists the recession is now not a foregone conclusion. The Fed's Powell has held out hope for a so-called smooth landing, a cooling in financial activity that doesn't lead to a recession. However, he mentioned on June 22nd that reaching one will be very challenging. So far, the labor market remains a shiny spot in any other case, darkening the financial picture with employers including greater jobs than anticipated in June. I guess it is saying a lot. Number five, how awful would matters get? For the most part, Economists are usually describing any achievable upcoming recession as slight or moderate. Even so, all recessions are painful and even a moderate recession, however, would probably imply heaps of Americans dropping their jobs. Estimates vary, but the unemployment percentage is anticipated to rise from a close to five decade low to someplace around 4% to 6%, properly below the 10% considered in the wake of the Great Recession and the almost 15% considered at the beginning of the pandemic. In phrases of duration, economists defer. One reason why this recession should appear longer lasting is that excessive inflation may also keep the Fed from stepping in to assist the economy again. It's really worth noting that as tough as it is to forecast when a recession will occur, it's however more difficult to envision what one would seem like. Number six, wait, does that mean the global economy is heading for a financial crisis too? Well, now this debate has turned into something more concerning. Maybe we all are going to face the same horrific financial crisis. The international financial system is dealing with a comparable picture, excessive inflation and aggressive steps through central banks to curb it. The world may soon be teetering on the verge of an international recession. Only two years after the last one, Pierre Olivier Gorinchas, the International Monetary Fund's chief economist, stated in July, World Bank President David Malpass in a document launched in June, stated that even if an international recession is averted, the aggregate of excessive inflation and slow growth, something recognized as stagefflation, may want to persist for numerous years. In Europe, 
The destiny of the economic system hinges on access to Russian gas, although recession dangers range via country. In August, the Bank of England warned the UK is heading for greater than a year of recession under the weight of hovering inflation. Meanwhile, in China, the world's second largest financial system, the outlook stays uncertain. The financial system is displaying blended symptoms of recovery, strained through stringent COVID-19 measures and related lockdowns. However, the authorities are searching for approaches to step in. Number seven, is USA designed to function in a different way than other industrialized nations? This question suddenly popped in my mind. The innovative motion was, or still is a try, to get the US to exchange its core beliefs and concepts to more closely match the direction others have taken. The present day representative management of the United States can't make adequate insurance policies to exchange the US core, although they have tried. There is a huge effect on the economy. The rest of the world is experiencing this as well. The US will possibly be fine. However, it may additionally take a while for an equilibrium that human beings are waiting for to come. Supply chain issues are pretty traumatic, but we can say they are no longer horrific. We are no longer used to not having an overabundance of items on the cabinets, so that will probably change when we exchange the modern day humans in power, the most outstanding of which are a very long way of contact. It is ridiculous. Number eight, who benefits more from financial crisis? It depends totally on the crisis. A stock market crash represents the best opportunity for the average person to get rich. When prices are low, people can invest and the stock market would always come back. This is why dollar cost averaging is such an excellent strategy. When there is a collapse, the rich suffer disproportionately, but they are often also best positioned to scoop up the scraps and make money. Stock market crashes have the same critical value that forest fires have. They create the opportunity for new life and new growth in the ashes. Rich people are more likely to have assets that can be used to scoop up bargain stocks. In a financial crisis where there is a hyperinflation, human beings who make investments in the stock market make out in an inflation due to the fact the stock market tends to develop faster. Again, you have to have money to make cash and retaining cash in an inflation is a waste. It has to go someplace and that region is the inventory market in view that bonds won't assist you in an inflation. Tips protected investments may assist as well. In the upcoming collapse, which I predict will take place between September and December, cash will be the king. I suggest to all people to begin stockpiling cash. If I am incorrect and the economic system doesn't give away and I am often wrong, then you will have a pile of money available for different matters, and that's in no way a horrific thing. However, if there is a crash, then actual estate, shares, and different securities will decline in fee, possibly swiftly, and having money is the solely secure aspect to have. In a monetary disaster different than inflation, money is king. Number nine, how long after the beginning of a financial crisis is it evident that we are in one? The answer depends on your definitions. In the 2008 financial crisis, for example, you ought to hint the start to the establishing of 2006. By that time, all the portions had been in place. Home costs have been peaking and subprime delinquencies have been spiking. Massive personal loan underwriting fraud was coming to light. Credit markets have been in bubble territory. Looking at the previous economic crisis, I'd say that timeline is noticeably typical two to three years earlier than the disaster that matters are going to blow up are obvious. However, it's now not apparent they'll spark a crisis. Evidence step-by-step -step builds to extend estimates of likelihood and probable measurements of the crisis. By the time it is undeniable, we are in a predominant crisis. We're probably solely months away from the bottom. Hope you get the answers to all your questions. Make sure to subscribe to my channel for more financial advices and queries. Don't forget to mention your questions in the comment section below, and we'll try to answer them in our next video.